Hey guys, Tim Bruce with Train Boston. We're here today, another baseball series with Dan and Jeff. Uh, Dan Mahoney, I uh, played collegiate baseball at the University of Connecticut professionally for the Florida Marlins and the New York Yankees. And I'm Jeff Carlson, physical therapist here, and I uh, uh, played at Quinnipiac College as a starting pitcher and also uh, with New York Yankees in the minor leagues and also did a lot of rehab and training with the Colorado Rockies over three or four years. And I'm Tim Brewster, physical therapist, sports trainer, and played baseball at uh, Boston University catcher. I like the echo down here. So here we're today, and uh, we're going to talk about Tommy John surgery and really our thoughts on that and try to bring it to the forefront. And uh, Dan has first-hand experience on that, so we're going to let him lead off the discussion. So uh, I had Tommy John surgery in 2009. Uh, it was my first professional season. Um, I was a reliever in college and went to a starting pitcher. Um, blew my elbow out two months into my professional career. Uh, see this nice, beautiful souvenir I have. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. Good tat. <laughs> and uh, so the rehab lasted for me nine and a half months, which was extremely fast. Um, I think that there aren't many people that get back faster. Usually, it's about 18 months. I think before you're 100 um, percent. Going through Tommy John surgery um, was tough. A lot of small shoulder weights, a lot of boring days uh, with tubing and stuff like that. But I think that what we're here to discuss today is basically the causes and why why it happens. Uh, my belief is that it happens because um, of a couple of things: overuse, uh, people not being prepared to throw at the velocities that they're throwing at, um, and also underuse. Um, you know, not. Be coddled too much as a starting pitcher, for yeah, example. Exactly. Not, not, not being able to do what you're supposed to do because you don't do it enough. In mechanics, too, but changing your mechanics, if we talk about that. Yeah, we, uh, I, I changed my mechanics my first year of Pro Ball, and uh, I think that that may have had something to do with it. I'm not sure. There's no can you demonstrate um, the mechanics you used prior to and then the mechanics that were changed just so we can see that on film? So, when I was in college um, and everything, um, there's pictures of me, and my arms are in this position. So my shoulders are fully loaded. I'm in pretty, pretty bad throwing position right here. Jeff, you want to kind of chime in on this? Bad throwing position as far as, far as he's maximally internally rotated on his right arm. Okay? So his arm is going to, as he's opening up his body and getting ready to throw, he's going to have to be going from maximal internal rotation to maximal external rotation. So that quick movement from here to here and then release is a lot of stress and strain on the, medial, on the medial elbow. And you've got to think about how fast he's moving through that process. And all that load of torque goes right through Can you give us here. a front view too on that, Dan, from that same position so we can see what you're... So, so he's going from... El elbows are pretty much up. They're almost above my shoulders. So I'm in this position And right go through here. the motion so we can see the sequential yeah. from a side view. So here. he's going from here as he's opening up to maximum Look at, can, we, can we zoom in on this here? Okay. Come up here, Robin. Give us, give us a nice shot of we'll the torque yep, as he comes up and through here. He's going from maximal internal rotation to maximal external Look at the torque rotation. on the elbow in this position from that extreme. His body is wanting to open up as he's releasing the ball towards home plate. And again, it's just a, an awful lot of rotation that's straining on the shoulder and also straining on the elbow. So when Dan is going from a reliever position where he's used to throwing 30 pitches in a game uh, to starting pitcher status, which is up to 100 or 120 pitches per game. Uh, that, that's a big jump in volume for throwing. And uh, if he had any mechanical issues, these sorts of uh, tissues are where they're going to break down. You know, my, my experience with playing, I uh, was a starting pitcher all through high school and college and then a, a reliever in the minor leagues. but. I pitched in 98 and 99 were my two seasons of minor league ball, so I've been out of the game for 15 years. And back when I played, nobody had these injuries. I mean, there was the rare nobody. occasion of a, of a Tommy John or UCL injury or some people that complained of having a dead arm because of just rotator cuff wear and tear and so on and so forth. But I'm seeing a lot of this stuff is, is just people trying to throw too hard these days. Like, mm -hmm. your, your pathway to the big leagues or to make money or to get scholarships or whatnot is to have higher velocity. And if you're... Working out too much and trying to, to overexert yourself with the throw, 
these are the structures that are going to break down. I heard some interesting stuff recently too where uh, guys are, are opting for surgery when they have a grade 1 or grade 2 UCL sprain rather than rehabbing it because the theory or the myth is that you come back throwing harder after Tommy John, which is kind of ludicrous because uh, stats say that 80% of UCL reconstructions can get back to their same level of pitching, but that means one out of five does not. So that's a, 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 that's a good, good point. It's a, uh, you know, it's a, you got to weigh the options if you have that sort of injury, but you know, you, your, your training and your throwing program and how you condition your arm is so important. Uh, Tim brings up a good point. You want to talk about the Ferrari in the garage, like you said. Yeah, I mean, I was a catcher my whole life. Through high school, college, and, and post-college, I played in some summer league. And uh, we never had one pitcher with any arm problem ever. And, uh, you know, we threw every day more than you guys do. We threw a lot. I mean, uh, you know, there wasn't any, hey, I pitched yesterday, so we're taking the next day light. Whatever the team was doing the next day, the pitcher did. It doesn't mean he threw excessive, but... It wouldn't be unrealistic for that pitcher to throw for 10, 15, 20 minutes. You know, 60 anyway. feet, 90 feet, even pro hop it out to 120, 150 if we, you know, uh, before you know, we went on the batting, batting practice. Day, but yeah. Practice, yeah, and we never had an, we didn't have an elbow or shoulder, nothing. Now, we also had guys that in high school were probably throwing, you know, mostly 80, 85, 86. Um, but that's my whole point. I think, you know, the, the normal pitcher... Um, even the, the elite people are going to throw somewhere in that 88 to 92, really challenging themselves. I think it's when you're trying to stretch consistently that 92 to 96 range, and that's what everyone's shooting for. That's that's the problem. And uh, we, we talked about the Ferrari in the garage. You can't have this awesome car that's well tuned in a garage that sits there for a month, and then you take it out and you kick it out at 7,000 RPMs, and you put it away for a couple weeks, and you do it again. You keep doing that long enough, you're going to blow the engine. So. You know, I just think, um, I think Dan's brought up some good points, and Jeff, I think the throwing angle was a big factor in your, yeah, your situation. Right. When you look at that, that's extreme to me. As a physical therapist, yeah. uh, to me, that's a complete extreme. One end range, the other with maximum velocity. And he's a strong guy. Look at the size of this. He's a strong You're guy. You're a big pitcher. Very, very mobile guy. He's a very Dan's mobile, got a big pitcher. a lot of flexibility. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and I also think, I think we baby throw. And, and I think this whole system, and I'm old school, I gotta be honest. The whole baseball thing taking four hours for a game for me. We played every game in two hours. You know, even nine inning games, and uh, there's too much changing pitches, situational stuff. Lefty can only throw to a lefty, righty to a left. It's righty to righty. It's out of control. You know, it's like if your pitcher's having success out there and in a groove, let him keep pitching. Because it's a horrible matchup, and I think that is a big factor in how we manage games with five, six pitches, seven pitches a game. First of all, slowing the game down, which is a whole different topic, which we'll do another time. But it's really the whole stop, starting, go from nothing to fast, and then keep changing pitchers as a factor. I think yeah. it kind of brings everything into how sports is going on these days. You know, we have kids playing one sport, or we have kids playing, oh, I only play these two sports. You know, we don't, we're not breeding athletes anymore. We're, we're breeding... It's all specificity, right? Specificity. It's too much, right? And, and you know, all I, I, see kids, I see kids and have teammates who... Played 12 months out of the year, 12 months out of the year, 12 months out of the year. You know, after a while, it's going to take its toll. You need to get out there. And you need to I, I think uh, in, with today's starting pitchers in the big leagues, those are the, the throwers that you're seeing having Tommy John surgery or UCL injuries more than anyone else. And uh, those are the pitchers that are getting paid the most. Your Steven Strasburgs, your, uh, give me a couple other examples of uh, big name you know, guys. We, we brought up, you know, Brian Wilson, who was an elite closer, Josh Johnson, he's yeah. a big time stud for a while. Yeah. Two Tommy John surgeries each. Um, you know, guys are losing their careers, and yeah. you know, it all comes back to being able to throw hard. That's how you're going to make your money. Um, Tanaka with, uh, with, the, with yeah, the Yankees now too. Wide. So these guys are, are really reined in and held in by their uh, strength and conditioning coaches to to not be overthrowing or they've got on very specific pitch counts because they don't want to ruin their their big investment. And, and that uh, coddling might be also leading to some of this damage. And Dan, your point too is you were just changing it from uh, you know, bullpen to, to start too. That's, that was another factor in volume. Uh, but I still feel like the whole lack of volume with these guys and changing angles with guys that were successful before, that's too many variables to try to change when you're at a high velocity activity. Like when, when I was able to throw and do, you know, throw 120 feet, throw 300 feet if I could get out there that day, you know, when I was able to do that, my arm felt better than when I was on a sched set schedule of you know, today you're throwing 60 feet, today you're th tomorrow you're throwing 90 feet, but after that you'll throw 120, then after that maybe you'll go out to 150, but you might not. 
thanks for bringing that up. Look at Dice Gate, right? I mean, you know, horrible, you know, Dice Gate had a horrible career here. I mean, by most standards. I mean, a 3-2 count seemed like every batter. Slowest games you'd watch. But my reason I'm bringing this up is, the guy had great success in Japan, which I know is an easier league. When you take him here and they change all the stuff, what happened to him? He went down like a, like, like Titanic. It was terrible. And we changed his thing and it didn't work. And I think we've got to look at what we're doing. He's a good example of that. J- Japan, I, I know from talking to a couple guys that have been over there and stuff, they are practicing probably eight hours a day. Right. And they're playing and they're working on their craft and, and they're throwing. They throw a lot. Yeah. Um, I Not think as I've, many of those I've, there. I've heard a couple of stories that some guys throw up to an hour. Yeah. Which, you know, might sound crazy to some standards, That's but... a couple hundred throws. Guys, we throw at least for 20 minutes every... Yeah. And we threw every day. Yeah. I mean, we play seven days a week. You have two or three games. If you're playing Legion, you're playing doubleheaders, you know, Saturday, Sunday, playing doubleheaders. You only have four pitches on the staff. You can figure out how those rotations go, yeah. right? So... And we didn't have any arm injuries. So, and that, that's a good example of the Japan. We, we would throw at least 20 minutes a day. But like Dan was saying, too, they dump him in, into a category to where you're going to throw 50 pitches right. this day, 60 throws from 90 feet tomorrow, so on and so forth. It's much like the problems you see in uh, you know, skilled physical therapy and stuff like that, too, where they dump you into a category. Okay, you're in for a shoulder problem, right. so you get these five exercises. You're in for a knee, you get these shoulder, six right? ribs. It has to be specific to the individual and what they need and... and and that's where I think our team can help with throwers that may have uh, you know, issues and concerns about uh, you know, arm injuries or how to condition themselves to be healthy for the season. So, so a lot of good information there. Yeah. I mean, we could probably talk for another half hour, but I think yeah. we'll put a wrap on this. But I think, you know, uh, Train Boston, I think we feel we have the best discipline having guys that actually pitch at the major league level, that have strong training, strong rehab backgrounds. And, uh, you know, I think we have the answers and... Uh, I thought that was a good topic. Yeah. All right. Look forward to more. Thanks.